rebirth dividing the word of truth Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth King James Version I call on the Lord Jesus Christ who is the one path to salvation to enter and mediate in all discussion to guide men and women with meekness and kindness to the preservation of innocence and the truth let each be to their own but with one purpose. A decision on any matter without consideration of all the available facts may be both presently premature and, through the light of hindsight, inappropriate. To proceed without close study would be to suggest that yesterday has no effect on today and that today cannot influence tomorrow. Study is the diligence of the wise. The Lord does preserve the man who trusts in him. For who is my Lord but the Saviour of all mankind? As such, to whom a man's goodness extends, that shall be his limitation. For where is insincerity is a man's failure, and where is untruth is his undoing. One may seek justice in the court of man, but one may find mercy only in the court of the Lord. The gospel is written not just to instruct, but also to recognize and reflect. To be just requires standards. It requires that there be a truth which is understood by all. It requires definition and appropriation and examination. It requires a pathway that is clear and well lit. It requires godly countenance. As distance from God in all decisions leads only to bitterness. And in being led by God, we praise both grace and effort. That each profession with its tasks has its pains that must be endured should go without question. And for our earthly trials we are recompensed by earthly encumberments. Yet the complexity of our Substance will mask much, and so we endeavor to simplify every argument in defense of the statement that only God is perfect. Perfect in a just and evidential fashion. For man has the will of a sinner, and the hands of a thief, and the tongue of a serpent. And who would deny one the right to their opinion about what may or may not be true, or whatever so may be reasonable under momentary circumstances? Many narratives are painted by desires and ignore the exploration of deeper inquiry. And who would deny man the right to feel victimized by his own disbelief? Understanding only that what remains, however improbable, once the impossible has been eliminated, is the meritable opportunity of a righteous conclusion. Driven by God, we are led to good. Led by the devil, we are pulled into darkness with promises of enlightenment. 
there is but one path to a just solution, one way. It is through the swearing of matters before the Lord who sits righteous over all. It is the path that brings fear and trepidation to most men and women. For who have seen in their own heart realize the foolishness of their own desires? And they should. For man is corrupt, and if not corrupt, then corruptible. God knows this. For do wise men fear God for no reason at all? O oh, henceforth comes Satan, but through the words and acts of man. Certain truths never change. Kings recognize kings as the wise recognize the wise. The fools, however, never recognize the fool. And before the recognition of God does even Satan tremble, for all must represent themselves to be weighed and measured sooner or later. And what trouble does one bring to the Lord with untruth? What is the opinion of a man that it would be elevated over godly countenance? Ask yourself, what is man's work if it is magnified to be as if a decision from God himself? Would that not be foolishness? For foolishness is nothing more than rebellion against God and the path laid down for a righteous society. In truth, man does slander constantly with his mouth and twist realities with his hand. And blood may pay the bills of serviceable authority, but will it cover the debts to God? I urge you to act well, but be no actor. Understand that the sun shines on all who God surveys. Even the wicked soak the sunshine. But only for a season, as the godless are undesiring of relevant truth. And truth reveals itself in time. The Lord rewards each and all with his judgment. Man finds moments, while God offers eternity. But then these things are already known, deep down inside, for there is always more in and between heaven and hell, as there are more thoughts than words and more opinions than answers. The priority, of course, being that without careful and thoughtful examination, the fairy tales of lives are likely to become the dominant narrative, not just here, today, but everywhere, for all time. And the permanence of God is no fairy story. One must ask, to find answers, one must seek to discover. And yet the hidden treasure of life's resolutions are not in trinkets or arguments, but in time. A time that evaporates, a time that does not return, a time that is ever less and never more, a time that is momentary space passed through fleeting unable to be held, and so unable to be let go of. Let us not be capricious in any of our conclusions. To make the right decision we must ask and answer if man may be profitable to God, or if God's laws perhaps may be profitable to man. Truth be told that the marginalization of Christian moral values and standards from society opens the door to darker elements. 
Any room where slander may be employed to gain advantage is unbecoming of God's natural laws. It is almost always beyond time to let the ear taste judgments of grace. For wickedness hurts in the same place that righteousness heals. It is a choice that is simple and yet not easy, and until the contradictions of life are understood, it remains almost impossible. Western justice requires a belief that there can truly be no king but Christ and that in salvation is the strength to do the right things. All else is acquiescence to nothingness. Faith heals where the sorcery of medicine appears to have little positive effect. Joshua 1, 9 be strong and of a good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, with so ever thou goest. Man himself shall tend to reason from experience to truth, whilst God reasons from truth to experience. It is for this reason that we all sin. And perverse is the tongue that claims domain over things that it does not know. In truth, there is no truth without repentance. With such an understanding comes the fact that God may bless the end of things more than the beginning. In every case, there is an opportunity to stand before Christ and have him as your judge. Or, there is the path that a man takes when he leans into his own understanding. Blessed always is the man who does not walk with the ungodly or twisted. So, seek answers and show meekness. We stand so that we may understand that pain is an inevitability, but suffering is a choice. In decisions of value, truth in man is far less sure than a fear of the one true Lord. For there are none who do not wrestle with councils and principalities in high places. Only integrity and inerrancy leads to a correct outcome. All else is insolvency. Even Satan himself cannot deceive those who have not first deceived themselves. Avoid the vanity of life's errant distractions. Either the truth is sought or Christ is exercised from every discourse. In which case, it may be argued that no truth can be ascertained at all. There is no hope lost in the light of God. John 6 verses 38 to 40. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will, which has sent me. With due kindness and grace, know that if lower authority does not seek the truth, then one is, under God, naturally forced to petition and seek a redress of grievances in higher authority. Christ be praised, for living with appreciation beats living with expectation. For there is but one way to any resolution. Carrying the burden of his own sins, a man is crushed. But by passing this to Christ, man becomes free. This is the truth of the kingdom of heaven. 
Let us pray. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Amen.